Hi everyone, it's Bensa here. Unity 2022.2 will be very exciting because, amongst many things, the HD render pipeline will feature a water system. So I thought we could download the current beta version of the editor and make this scene together. This is going to be a longer tutorial and we will cover the following topics. Downloading Unity and creating a new scene, enabling and testing the new water rendering, importing a ship model from Polyhaven and fixing some issues related to the importing process, creating a very basic shader in shader graph for the ship, using Unity's cloud component to give motion to the sails, using HDRP's cloud system to create a great looking sky and add lighting, and finally, post-processing the scene. I have added timestamps to the video, so feel free to skip the parts you are not interested in. Let's launch Unity Hub to download the latest version of Unity 2022.2. And I must apologize in advance, because during the editing of this video I realized I forgot to capture the cursor, so I will be highlighting stuff by these red rectangles. Anyway, click on Install, Install Editor and Pre-Releases. At the time of making this video, the latest version is 2022.2.0b13. If you have a newer version, just download that one. You can add modules if you want to test something out. Personally, I will not, I only care about the water system for now. Hit install and wait. I will start a new project. Do not forget to select the appropriate editor version. I usually download the sample project to have a few stuff ready, but you can go with 3D HDRP core if you want. You will probably need to set up the HDRP asset manually though. Remember that the water system is only available in HDRP. Let's make a new scene. I will call mine Ocean. Right click in the hierarchy and add the water surface, Ocean. Unity tells us that we need to enable water rendering in HDRP asset, so let's just do that by clicking Open. Unity kindly scrolls down for us to the water system, however, enabling the water here is only one part of the puzzle, but if we are already inside the HDRP asset, we can enable a few more settings, such as screen space global illumination and screen space reflections. Our next step towards seeing the water is adding a sky and fog global volume. Inside the visual environment override, I enable ambient mode and set it to dynamic. Now we need to click on add override, lighting and water rendering. Do not ask me why it is under lighting. Enable it and still nothing. So the last thing we need to do is going into edit, project settings and under graphics, clicking on the HDRP global settings. Scroll down to the frame settings and under camera, rendering, at the very bottom you will see water. You need to tick that one and finally our ocean works. So just to recap, in order to see water rendering, you need to complete the following steps. Go into project settings, under graphics, click on HDRP global settings. Scroll down to frame settings, camera, rendering and enable water. Still inside the project settings, under quality, click on HDRP and under rendering, enable water rendering. Keep in mind that you need to enable this for all HDRP assets separately, should you have more. You need to add the global volume to the scene. My suggestion is to go with the sky and fog volume and under lighting, add water rendering. Now you can create water. Ok, so as you can see, our water looks really cool, but it cannot interact with objects. After a little digging on the Unity forums, it seems Unity is working on some physics interactions such as buoyancy. I do not know how detailed the water physics will be when 2022.2 releases, but the related c -sharp classes are available. We will actually be using a script later, so you can make your own water interactions in code. I guess if you want to make Sea of Thieves, you might need a dedicated water system, but for average users, this system will be more than enough, in my opinion. We can play with the ripples, foam, Foam will become more visible if we increase the distant wind speed under swell. We can also add some nice caustics and underwater effects as well. I tried adding a planar reflection probe, but it did not improve reflections too much. So the star of our scene will be the water, for sure, but we need something to spice it up, for example a ship. Lucky for us, Polyhaven has just what we need, and it is completely free too. Just enter ship in the search bar and download one you like. I went with the pinnace. I don't know how to pronounce that. We select 4K textures and FBX format and hit download. We extract the zip folder and we can drag everything into Unity. 
We got a folder for the textures and also the model. Let's put it into the scene for inspection. You can see that something is not right with the colors. Let's expand the model to investigate. Opening the mesh of the hull and choosing the tangents option, we can see that something is not right. And it matches our funny behaving colors. Select the full model so we can see the import settings. We can see that for tangents the default option is calculate mixed space. Change that to import. And here I pause the video because we will be using clot simulation later and in order to be able to actually see the clot in a build game we need to enable read write and set optimize mesh to nothing. Unfortunately the clot simulation itself did not work for me in the build version at the end but Unity's clot system is not the most reliable and we are using a beta editor version so stuff like that is expected. After that we can hit apply and our discoloration is fixed. The next thing we notice are the the very ugly textures. Upon inspection we see that our 4K textures are compressed and maximized at 2K. Let's change max size to 4K and compression to none for all textures and hit apply. While we are at it, let's highlight all normal textures and set the texture type to normal map and hit apply. Now the ship looks really really cool. But we can make it even better. Click on the ship once more and click on materials and extract materials. Create a new folder for them. Now we can inspect the materials. They are using the HDRP lead shader and they use the albedo and normal textures. However, we also have roughness and metallic maps and an alpha map for the sails and currently we do not use any of those. HDRP lead shaders use a so-called mask map that can store the metallic, smoothness, not roughness, ambient occlusion and detail maps in a single texture. This is good because it frees up some memory space for us, however we need to create this map using Photoshop or GIMP or using different Unity assets or packages that can create this map for us. I instead will make a new shader in shader graph, but I put a few links in the description related to HDRP lead shader mask maps. First of all, we create a new folder for the shader. Right click, then click on create, shader graph, HDRP, lead shader graph. Give it a name. The next few steps are optional, but I usually like to keep the original materials around, so I will make new materials to go with our shader. Go back to the folder where we extracted the materials of the ship and duplicate all of them by hitting Ctrl plus D. I add the N, N for new, prefix to the duplicate materials so that I will be able to quickly identify them later during the material assignment. Then I assign the new materials to the corresponding parts of the ship. Depending on whether you made duplicate materials or not, you either have the new materials assigned to the ship or the old ones. Select all those materials that are currently assigned to the ship and in the shader option look for the shader graph option and select our new shader. It is going to be a very very basic shader. Its aim is really only to be able to use our metallic and roughness maps without converting them to a mask map. In the left hand corner click on the plus button and create a new field. Choose texture 2D. We are going to create 5 texture 2D fields. Albedo, normal, metalness, smoothness and alpha. In the right hand corner we open the shader graph menu, look for the HDRP part and enable alpha clipping. We also need to select our normal texture 2D and change its mode to normal map. Let's drag our albedo into the blackboard, then right click on an empty space, click on create node and look for the sample texture 2D node. You can use the search box. We just connect our albedo texture to the appropriate input node of our sampler and then connect the RGBA output node to the base color of our fragment. We need to repeat these steps for the remaining textures, except for smoothness. The only thing you need to pay attention is to change the type of sampler for the normal map to normal. Now all maps are assigned, except for the smoothness map. If we go back to our textures, we can see we have roughness textures, but Unity uses smoothness textures. The conversion between roughness and smoothness maps are quite easy and can be done in any image editing software. However, we want to stay inside Unity, because of course we do, so we need to make this conversion inside the shader itself. And to make our shader a bit more flexible, we want it to be able to handle both roughness and smoothness maps as well. First of all, we create a new field. This is going to be a boolean, let's call it is roughness. Put it into the blackboard too. We can add our smoothness texture, a sampler and connect them. Create a node and look for one minus. 
connect its input to the sampler. Now create a branch node. This is basically an if statement. There is a question whose answer can only be true or false and this answer determines what the outcome will be. The predicate or the question will be our boolean variable. The output of the branch node can be connected to the smoothness of the fragment. We need to think a little here. What is our boolean called? Is roughness. So, if this is false, then our smoothness texture is a smoothness texture and we can use the result from the, sample, from the sampler directly. So, we can connect the sampler's RGBA output into the false input of the branch. On the other hand, if our smoothness texture is actually a roughness texture, we need to convert it first into a smoothness texture and so we need to send the data through the 1- node first and our shader is ready. Of course, now our ship looks like if it was made out of mirror but by assigning the appropriate textures we can finally see the ship in its full glory. Do not forget to set the is roughness flag to true for each material and the alpha textures can stay empty. The only tricky part is the material of the sails. This is the only case where we actually have an alpha texture so let's assign it. We can see that we do not have a metalness texture for the sails and of course the material looks totally wrong. We can modify the shader to handle cases like this but lucky for us the metal metalness texture of the interior of the ship is pure black, meaning there are no metal elements and we can use this texture for the sails as well. The only thing left is to enable the double sided and alpha clipping options and with this our ship is finally ready. Now let's create a Cinemachine virtual camera and move the ship to a spot on the surface of the water where we like it. Of course, this looks boring and unnatural. The ship should be moving together with the water surface. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there is currently no buoyancy option for the water, but all classes are available in C Sharp, so we can make our own solution. Or we can borrow it. I found this script on the Unity forum, I will put the link down in the description. It will snap the transform, it is a attached to, to the surface of the water. So let's copy it to the clipboard. Do remember the name of the class. We need to give this exact name to the c -sharp script we are going to create. So create a scripts folder, create a new c -sharp script, give it the exact name as the class and open it. Inside the script delete everything and insert the copied script from the clipboard. Now save it. The script snaps the pivot point to the object to the water surface. Depending on where the pivot of the ship is, it might or might not look good. We want to control how much the ship's hull is submerged, so we need to add an extra game object under the ship in the hierarchy. Give it a name, then move it out from under the ship. This way this game object inherited the exact position of our ship. Now we can move the ship under it in the hierarchy. We can now add the fit to water surface script to the ship pivot and assign our water surface in the required field. Now hit play to see the script in action. I am not too familiar with ships, but to me it seems a bit too high above the water. I move the ship along the y-axis to the height which I like better, copy the y value of the transform and quit play mode. Now I can insert the value into the transform of the ship. Now we are going to make the sails a bit more interesting by using Unity's cloth component. Here I want to mention that no matter what I did, I could not make the cloth work in a build project. It might be because this editor is a beta version, however I have heard that Unity's cloth simulation is not too reliable anyway, so it can happen that the whole system is just bugged. Anyway, cloth works really well in the editor, so I thought we could learn how it works. Select the sails and add the cloth component. You can see that the skeletal mesh render was automatically added to the game object and the regular mesh renderer was removed. We can see that our cloth is not fixed to anything so it falls down after hitting the play button. Quit play and open the cloth constraints option. A new window will appear. Here we can select to which point we want to apply a constraint. Highlight one of the corner points of a cell and enable max distance. Keep it at zero. Now if you click away you can see that the dot became red. Do this for every corner of every every sail. After hitting play we can see that the sails remain in place and behave like some kind of cloth or fabric material. However they do not collide with the environment which looks weird. To fix this we can add colliders to the cloth with which it can interact. Cloth materials can only interact with sphere or capsule colliders. Let's make a sphere and position it here. Assign it to the sphere collider section of the cloth and hit play. You can see that the cloth interacts with the collider and does not 
intersect the ship. We could add colliders to all other sails, but I want to try out something else. We can quit play and delete the sphere. Highlight the sails. You can see two fields, internal and random acceleration. We can see that our ship faces the Z direction, so by adding a Z component to these two fields we can get a wind effect. And now our sails move in the wind. Now a ship is fully done, so we can set up the sky. I usually add everything related to lighting, shadowing and sky to the default sky and fog global volume and create a separate volume for the post-processing. First, I add the cloud layer and volumetric clouds from the sky override. To see the cloud layers, we need to enable them as background clouds in the visual environment override. We can see the cloud layer more clearly if we enable the volumetric clouds override and turn the clouds off. This is a bit clunky, but needed because the volumetric clouds are part of the default HDRP asset if we use the sample scene. By changing the opacity in the cloud layer, we can observe the effect the cloud layer has on the lighting, such as the reflections on the water surface. Also, look at how the cloud layer reacts to the sun. It scatters the appropriate colors no matter what time of day it is. This is an improvement compared to older Unity versions. I really like the clouds that are in the blue channel, so I gonna go with them, but you can mix the channels if you want, or you can add your own cloud layer textures. Next, I re-enable the volumetric clouds. I look for a good place to my directional light and enable screen space shadows and the contact shadows. By changing some parameters in the volumetric fog and then increasing the volumetrics multiplier of the directional light, we can get really cool light shafts that interact with the clouds. You can also play with the fog's anisotropy. I wanted a bit more clouds, so I changed into the stormy preset. It gives us some large, dark clouds, but it is not completely overcast, so we can see some blue patches of sky that creates a nice contrast. I rotate the sun to get the lighting I want. I then add all subcategories to my volume from the shadows override. Finally, I add everything from the lighting override, except for probe volumes option. I found the ship a bit too dark, so I increased the indirect diffuse lighting multiple to 1.27. This is a quick and dirty way to get some bounce lighting quickly, but it is definitely not the most elegant, nor the most beautiful. Now, the only thing left is really the post-processing. I create a new global volume, create a new profile for it and start adding overrides. I add bloom and exposure. I also add shadows, midtones and highlights, tone mapping, vignette, white balance and color adjustments. I add a bit of bloom, set the tone mapping to aces. This changes nothing because the default is aces, but I like having the option here as well. I increase the contrast and saturation just a tiny bit. Shadows, midtones and highlights can look a bit daunting at first, but it really does what it says. You can adjust the color and strength of each of these three separately. I want to have something blue overall, so I add a bit more blue to my shadows and midtones, but I increase the strength and the red tint of my highlights. I adjust the color temperature, enable the vignette and set the exposure to fixed for more control. Then I do some final adjustments between the indirect lighting controller in the sky and fog volume and my post-processing. Before we close off, I just want to mention again the problems I had during recording. If I use the recorder package as I usually do, everything looked fine except for the water. It moved too fast. My idea was to create a build to solve the issue. Building the project did help the water, but as I mentioned before, it completely destroyed the cloth simulation. So for the final render, I installed an add-on called full screen editor, entered play mode, enabled full screen mode and did the recording using the OB. Studio. This is something you should know if you want to make a short video from this scene. Hopefully, all of these bugs will be fixed when Unity 2022.2 officially releases. I really hope you learned something. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe. And if you want to know how I made this cinematic, watch my video where I explain how you can make a cinematic in Unity because I use the same methods here. Just remember that using the recorder in this particular case will destroy the water waves. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.